Another advantage I have over my competition, especially within hip-hop, is that I also don't mess with drugs. To hear some rappers tell it, drugs open up a pathway to creativity. They claim they do their best work when they're high. They might feel that way, but in my experience, drugs ultimately become a crutch, something rappers can lean on when they're feeling insecure or lacking focus. They might be helpful when you're getting started, but you're never going to go too far when you need a crutch to move forward. I witness this all the time in the studio. I know so many rappers who honestly don't believe they can make good music without being high in one way or another. They wouldn't dream of getting in the booth if there's no liquor to sip or weed to smoke. They're completely fearful that without that support, they can't perform or properly connect with the music they're trying to make. My thought has always been, suppose that crutch isn't available. What if you're at the studio and suddenly get a call that Dr. Dre is coming through? and want you to record a verse for him, or Just Blaze, Timbaland, or Mustard is coming through. You're going to tell one of these guys you can't record until someone runs and gets you a bottle or until a weed man rolls through? That opportunity might have passed by the time your man comes back. If you're a true creator, you have to be able to practice your craft in any situation. It's imperative that you create your own comfort zone without depending on any substance for help. Yes, you might believe the weed makes you a better writer, or the liquor makes it easier to be yourself. But you also need the confidence to know that you can do it without them. Otherwise, you're never going to be in total control of your own situation. No matter what situation or setting you find yourself in, you don't ever want to depend on anything or any other person to make you feel in control and comfortable. That sense of confidence should always come from within, not from an external source. To be clear, I don't judge people who do like to drink and smoke. In fact, I'm happy to sell you a bottle of Le Chimit de Bois to help you celebrate the next time you're out partying. All that I ask is that you're honest of your appraisal of the role drugs and alcohol play in your life. Some people are able to truly be social drinkers or smokers. They enjoy participating in social settings, but they can also just as easily go without. They can have a bottle of booze in their kitchen or a bag of weed in their dresser and never feel the urge to consume it. I can have cases of Branson Cognac or Le Chimin Duar champagne in my office and never think about them until it's time to do an event. Someone else might be tempted to crack open a bottle every single time they walk by, or they might start drinking a whole bottle every day on a slot. If alcohol or drugs have that sort of pull on you, it's important that you address it head on. It's going to require a lot of discipline and focus, but you can build a lifestyle for yourself that doesn't need to be fueled by booze or drugs to get things done. I also understand that it can feel very overwhelming when you're the one person in your circle who doesn't drink or smoke. It can be hard, but I've been that person for years, and I've always managed to abstain, so it is possible. I doubt there's anyone in the history of the world who has said no to more blunts or booze than me. I've spent hours in cafes in Amsterdam, where everyone in G-Unit was blowing ruler-sized blunts in my face. I might have gotten a contact high, but I never took a hit. Snoop Dogg, Be Real, Red Man, Method Man, Wiz Khalifa, I've hung with all those dudes. I have a great time with them, but I choose not to smoke with them. And please don't say, well, they probably leave you alone because you're 50 cent. Nothing could be further from the truth. Everyone wants to be the one to finally get me to smoke. I'm like the pretty girl who won't date anyone, so everyone wants to ask me out, but I just keep saying no. For example, I recently hosted my tycoon party in NYC, and Snoop was one of my special guests. So when he tried to pass one of his blunts my way, everyone around started cheering for me to hit it. Not wanting to kill the mood, I took a big hit, and then just let the smoke swirl around in my mouth before I blew it back out. That's as far as it went. Bill Clinton has probably inhaled more weed smoke than me. Everyone was excited that I'd taken a hit, but there was no way I was actually inhaling that weed especially something as strong as the stuff Snoop smokes. The very few times I've smoked has made me extremely paranoid. So why would I get high surrounded by a thousand people all pushed up together, and I'm the one in charge of the entire event? I wouldn't have been enjoying the music if I inhaled. I would have been freaking the fuck out of all the things that could have been going wrong at my event. I'm always at my most comfortable when I'm in complete control of my surroundings, and that's very hard to do when you're high. In order to truly be in a position to hustle your hardest day in and day out, it's not enough to only avoid 
or at least cut down on the booze and weed.